Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of How to Run on Zwift. Today we're going right back to basics. This episode is your first steps on Zwift Run. If you've never run on Zwift before, you don't know how to get set up, this is the episode for you. Let's get into it. If you've only just heard about Zwift and you'd like to give it a go, it's actually a lot simpler than people think to get started. You really only need two things, and one of them you already have, your phone. You can use an iPhone like this, or you can use an Android. And the other thing you need is a foot pod. A foot pod is a small device that attaches to your shoe, so you can see one here. This is the Stride foot pod. If you're using your phone, particularly an iOS device, you will need a Bluetooth foot pod. A lot of people choose the Milestone foot pod. This company has been taken over now by Zwift, so there will in the future be a Zwift branded Milestone foot pod. If you want to go crazy, you can add a heart rate monitor. There we are, so that goes around your chest, but that's not essential. You don't even need to own a treadmill. You just go to the gym. As long as the gym has decent Wi-Fi or a decent 3G signal, you should be fine to run on Zwift. That said, if you do have a treadmill, you don't have to have any particular kind of treadmill. Any treadmill will do if you're using a foot pod. Some of the more expensive treadmills will broadcast a Bluetooth signal, so you don't actually need a foot pod. But you're getting into the realms of really expensive treadmills then. So once you've got your foot pod, the next thing to do is to download the Zwift app onto your phone. So this is what it looks like here. This is my iOS device and I've downloaded the orange Zwift app onto my phone. Next to it, you will see a blue app. That is the Zwift companion app. If you want to enter any races or if you want to look at your statistics or if you want to follow friends on Zwift, the Zwift companion app is the app that you need. The Zwift Orange app, that is the game itself. So once you've got that app installed on your phone, the next thing to do is to press it and start the game. So here we go. So once the app's loaded, it will give you this screen. Obviously, I'm already signed in. If you haven't got a user account, you'll be presented with the option to create one at this stage. And then all we need to do is press that little play button there and we'll be taken into the game. And then you're presented with the pairing screen. You can see we've got two options here, ride or run. We're concerned with running, so we want to be on the running pairing screen. And we've got some options here that we want to configure. So what we want to do is pair our foot pod with Zwift. So we're going to press run speed. It says tap to pair. And there, look, you can see that my treadmill is connected as a Bluetooth source. So I'm not actually wearing a foot pod. I know that my treadmill connects directly to Zwift. But in your case, if you're wearing a foot pod, you should see your foot pod listed there. And then you go ahead and click OK. So now we know that the foot pod or the treadmill is connected and it says connected with a little tick there. So you can also see there's a box there for cadence. Now, normally cadence would be provided by your foot pod as well. If you don't know what cadence is, cadence is simply the number of steps you do per minute. And finally, if you're wearing a heart rate monitor, you can also click to pair that as well. Now, if this is the very first time that you've ever used Zwift, I recommend that you just click OK and have a go. Start running, start walking on the treadmill, watch your avatar move, we'll show you that in a minute, and just enjoy the experience. But once you've got a little bit of experience using Zwift, you might notice that your foot pod and your treadmill speed don't match. There might be a little bit of a difference there, and so you might want to calibrate your foot pod. And the way we do that is we go to that little spanner icon there. So we click on the spanner, and here we are in the calibration tool. Now the calibration tool allows you to calibrate your foot pod so it matches the speed of your treadmill if you find that the two don't quite match. So you can set your treadmill to run at say 10 kilometers an hour, set the speed in Zwift to 10 kilometers an hour as you see here in the calibration tool, click next, click start and it will ask you to run for one minute at that speed so it can calibrate your foot pod and that's all there is to it really and then the next time you run your foot pod should be slightly more accurate. So then we come to this screen, this is the final screen that you will encounter before you actually get to run. And there are a number of options here. Run type. So one option that you have when you run on Zwift is to do a pre-programmed workout. So let me just show you that screen. So you put your finger on training, click training, 
and you've got a number of pre-programmed workouts that you can choose from and you can see the graphic display there shows you what your workout will consist of so this one here is a, a workout of four times 800 meters for example and you can scroll up and down and choose different workouts as you please but we're not going to do that today we're going to go right back to this screen the next thing to choose is your route now you can choose miles and miles of road to run on in Zwift some of it you will share with cyclists and some of it is run only path by default you're dropped onto the run only path but you can click change so we click change and look here are various routes that we can choose from to run you're presented with a map of the route you're about to run you can see how long the route is, you can see what the elevation is, although that won't necessarily make a difference. Some people do like to manually alter the incline of their treadmill to match the hills within Zwift. Many other people don't and just run flat. Zwift does not control the incline of your treadmill. If you want to go up or down, you can do it manually, but Zwift will not automatically control it. So back on this start page, there's a number of other things to show you on here. If it's your very first time on Zwift, again, I recommend you just run. Just enjoy the run on your own. You'll see other cyclists and other runners running past you or you'll pass them, but you'll be essentially running on your own round the course. However, you can join group events. And if you look up on the top right hand side there, you'll see a group 5K run started already. Join now. There are five other runners doing that run. Or you can do a tempo training run start Starting in four hours there are four other people there you can also see some colored letters beside that often the group runs are split into pace categories so um, group A group B group C and group D all those different pace groups will obviously run at different speeds so the A group is the fastest group then you've got the B group which is a little bit slower the C group which is slower still and the D group which is even slower than that and also sometimes those groups do different distances as well so the a group might do say 10 kilometers the b group eight kilometers the c group might do six kilometers and the d group four kilometers but you would all be part of the same group activity we do have our flagship events so we have monday run club and we have wednesday workout we also have run in the park on saturday those events run at different times during the day depending on what time zone you're in so if you're in australia or america or asia or the uk anywhere in europe there will be different time zones to suit you and to suit your lifestyle you can also look up the group events in advance if you go to the Zwift companion app remember that blue icon I showed you that Zwift companion app will list events coming up in the next few hours and in the next few days and you can click to join those events well in advance and get a reminder an hour before that event starts for example now below upcoming events there is the course schedule now as of 2018 there are currently four courses on Zwift and those courses are divided up across the month you can't currently choose which course you want well you can with a little Zwift hack however officially you can only run on the course that is presented for that day so the course schedule here is for October and you can see that London is the blue dot and uh, Innsbruck is the green dot and we have Richmond which is the white dot and the black dot is Watopia. Watopia is the most popular course. It's an island and it's completely imagine well virtually imaginary. Some of the routes are based on real world places but generally it's an imaginary course so you can run under the water in glass tunnels or you can run through the middle of a volcano or through the jungle with Mayan ruins. It gives the Zwift developers a lot of scope for their imagination to run wild which is why we love the Watopia course and we are on the Watopia your course today if we jump back into the middle of the screen now you can see where it says device status just another indication that your devices are connected whether you're wearing a foot pod or a heart rate monitor or whatever it might be and then underneath that you have the option to join another runner so you might know somebody on Zwift who is currently running or you might just like to run with somebody so you can click on the person's name and it will say run with Alberto as it does here and then you just click run with Alberto and it will drop you in exactly the place where Alberto is currently running if you decide you don't want to run with anyone click the little X and uh, you can then just carry on running on your own so click run and away we go
And here we are on the Zwift Watopia Island on the run only 5k loop. On the right hand side you can see a list of names so your name is highlighted in blue but you can click on other people's names and there's always the back to me arrow on the bottom left hand corner there. You can also give something called ride-ons. There's a big thumb there that's dropped down onto that chap's head. I've just given that person a ride-on, which is another way of saying well done or keep going, something like that. You can see on the top left-hand side there, this runner has got a heart rate monitor on and uh, it's uh, currently at 175 beats per minute. And you can see they've run just about five kilometers and their pace is 8.8 .8 kilometers per hour. And it's taken them 34 odd minutes to run that distance. So back to me. Bear in mind that all the people on the right hand side listed there are real people. They're all like you in a gym or at home using their treadmill and running on Zwift in real time with you. And it's often interesting to look at the country flags and see where everyone is that you're running with. It's also quite fun to see my avatar doing his little stretching exercises there. So how do we actually start running? Well, all you should need to do is press start on the treadmill. Once you press start on the treadmill, you will start to move. I'm at 1.2 kilometers now, 1.5, just going faster and faster now. Your avatar will walk until you get to 6.7, 6.8 kilometers an hour. So we're gradually getting faster, six kilometers now, 6.3. I'll start jogging. My avatar will start going at 6.8 and there he goes. And that is all there is to it. You are now running on Zwift. So we'll slow the treadmill down and your avatar should come to a stop. And that really is all there is to it to get running on Zwift. But there are one or two other things I can show you. If you're using a phone, it is obviously quite small, maybe a little bit difficult to see. And there is quite a lot of real estate on the screen here. So it is possible to actually remove some of the real estate from the screen. If you just swipe left or right on the screen, you can get rid of those sidebars there with the names on and with the statistics on. And you can also bring back, if you swipe in from the left or right hand side, you can bring back those items on the left and right hand side. You can also tap on the screen to bring up this option for taking a photo. You can also change the camera angle by pressing the camera a number of times to get different camera angles. You can also give a ride on or do various other comedy things there. And the other thing you can do is send a message. Press that message button there, you can type a message to other people and it'll pop up on the screen like so. And people nearby will see that message. It's also possible to turn around. So if you press that little curved arrow, that will allow you to turn around whilst you're running and you can go in a different direction. Let's just have a quick look at some of the other items on the screen here. Top right, you can see a map. That map just shows you the route that you're going on, the direction that you're traveling in. And also you can see it says minus two there. That is the gradient that you're currently running on. Again, if you're not altering the manual incline on your treadmill, then it won't make any difference to you. But you can, if you want to, follow the course incline with your treadmill. Moving back into the middle at the top, Zwift is a game. And like any computer games, you get points and you get prizes and you move up the levels. So you can see there, there's a, a number 21. Uh, that number is the level that I am in the game. Uh, it doesn't go any higher than 21. I've been using Zwift running for quite a long time, so I'm at the top level. But normally, as you move up the levels, you'll see there's a grey line there. Uh, it leads to an orange, little orange gift-wrapped prize at the end. That grey bar will slowly fill up orange, and the closer you get to the little orange prize at the end there, the closer you are to moving up to the next level of the game. Just above that, you can see distance travel, you can see time taken, and you can see speed. And then just to the left of that, you can click add a target. Say if you wanted to run for an hour, click add a target, run for 60 minutes, and it will count down the 60 minutes for you. Or if you want to run for 10K, for example, press add a target, press 10K, and it will count down the 10K for you. 
further over onto the top left corner, you can see the heart rate box. Now that is currently blue. I'm not wearing a heart rate monitor, so my heart rate is not currently listed there. But the heart rate is divided into zones. So blue is easy, relaxed, slow running. Uh, if you work a bit harder, it'll go to green. Harder still, it'll go to yellow, which is zone three. If you're really working out quite hard, it will go to zone four, which is the orange zone. And then the red zone at the end there is when you're really going all out. The zeros within those boxes are the time you spend within those heart rate zones. So as you run, you will get numbers in those boxes representing how many minutes you've spent in zone three or zone four, etc. Below that, you've got your kilometer split. So as you run each kilometer, it will tell you how long it took you to run that kilometer. And then under that, you've got some other metrics as well. You've got the calories that you burn and your average pace for the entire run. And below that, we have the menu button. So let's click that menu button and see what's in there. OK, so there's a lot to look at here. Uh, just note top left there, my name, my weight and my height. And there's a little pen icon. If you click that, you can alter, edit your details, change your name, uh, change your weight, whatever you might want to do. And then if we move over to the other side of the screen, you can see some other icons you can press. We're gonna start with the cogs at the bottom, which is the settings page. So if we go into the settings page, you can see here there are various options for you to change, including the volume of the sound in game, whether you're viewing imperial or metric stats, uh, whether you want the language filter on or off, all those kind of things you can alter in this menu section. Above settings is the customization screen. It's here where you can change the t-shirt, the shorts, shoes, socks, hair color, skin color, whether you've got a beard or not. There are loads of different options for things you can change in the customization menu. Back out of there and you can click that Bluetooth icon which takes you back to the pairing screen. You can click on badges. This will show you all the badges and achievements you've earned while you've been running or cycling on Zwift. And then above the rosette is the workout menu again. We've seen that, so we'll just go back. So once you've finished your run, you can click end run there. And it will take you to this screen, which is your run report. Shows you who you ran with and who gave you a ride on, how far you ran, all the stats that you need there. So once you've clicked OK on the run report, you'll come to this menu, which is the save menu. You can see the name of your run there, Watopia Zwift Run. At the bottom, you can see a bin on the right hand side at the bottom. That's if you want to discard the run and get rid of it. You can see an arrow at the bottom left. That's if you want to go back, change your mind, you want to do some more running. And then you've got the save button right at the bottom in the middle there. That save button, when pressed, will save your run into Zwift, but also to any third party tools that you use. So you might use Garmin Connect, you might use Strava, um, you might use Training Peaks. You can set up Zwift to transfer your run directly to those third party tools. Once you click save, you'll be directed back to this screen, which is the start page that we came in on in the first place. And that is it, guys. It's as simple as that. All you have to do then, like any other program on your phone, is just swipe up and off it goes. And we're back to the screen we started with. And that is it. That should be almost everything you need to know about running on Zwift. I hope you've enjoyed it. I know it's been a long one. Thanks for joining me. See you again. Take care. Bye-bye.